Weather scope. Severe weather strikes Minnesota yesterday and last night and could strike again today. And southern states broil under very high temperatures. Those stories plus in-depth forecasts and analysis on today's edition of Weather Scope. Well, if you've been watching the Weather Channel this morning, you've seen those thunderstorms developing in Lower Michigan Forecast Center picked it. They said that's where they were going to develop, and we're seeing it right now. And states from the plains to the northeast are on the alert for the potential of severe weather today. Good morning. I'm Marshall Cease. And I'm Rick Griffin. Thanks for joining us. This is the second day in a row that Minnesota faces the threat of uh, severe weather. Now, there's a Weather Channel chase team that caught some action there yesterday and last night. Well, you know, sounds kind of like a freight train. Well, this, in this case, it is. It's not a tornado or anything like that, which a lot of people say sounds like a freight train. At any rate, our chase train, uh, team headed through the state yesterday and found a line of intense storms. And right after sunset, they were getting a, a nice uh, frequent lightning display, as you can see here, as they followed the thunderstorm cells. By the way, the chase crew will be out on the plains for several more weeks, so stay tuned for their latest updates. Here's an update on the satellite picture in motion. Now, it was mainly yesterday and last night that Minnesota was under the gun for severe weather. The severe storms so far today have been near Lake Superior, Michigan's upper peninsula, and now near the front, a new cluster of thunderstorms is developing in northern lower Michigan where we have a number of severe thunderstorm warnings in effect. There is another disturbance coming out of the Rockies, and as moisture flows northward into this advancing system, the threat of severe weather will develop again late today and tonight for Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Right now the weather is fairly tranquil in this set of states right in here behind the eastward advancing front. But just in advance of the front, again the Storm Prediction Center has issued a severe thunderstorm watch, covers much of lower Michigan, including the Detroit metropolitan area, the northern suburbs anyway, but the, the saying is in and near the watch box, so be extra careful. Lansing, Flint, Houghton Lake, Alpena in the watch box. Here come those storms. They fire. That's right, Rick. There's good news for rain-soaked states from Illinois to West Virginia. The region will be dry today, giving flood-plagued areas some relief. This was the scene yesterday outside Clarksburg, West Virginia, with flooding in the region. As a result, overnight, it's not even going to be any relief. It's going to be in the 70s. 70s overnight. overnight. Oh, well. Stay with us. In Australia, getting lost is never an accident. It's a requirement. Tornado that ripped a two-mile path of destruction on April 19th of this, this year near Springfield, Illinois. We hear what it was like to track this tornado from storm chaser Dave Dahl. Sirens are going off here in town, guys. Hear the sirens? This is serious. This is it, guys. Yeah, there it is. Look to the left. Uh, I got it. Hey, confirmation on the walk What do you want to do? We may put up shop real close here. Pull over to the side. This is a dangerous storm. We just put damage along this path. Either one of those two spots. Either that spot or that spot. There it goes. It's coming down. It's reaching down. See the updraft. Rain's getting pulled right into the wall cloud. It's halfway down. We can't tell from here if there's if there's debris, but it's it's halfway down. Big funnel. It's just getting larger. It's much larger. There's debris. Debris. See the ground? Man, we are right in it. That is the tornado. Oh yeah, look at it. Off the left side. Lots of debris on the ground. It's coming right at us. It's coming right this way, guys. We're going to try to take cover up here. This thing is going to come right at us. No, it's coming right this way. It's trailing behind the major thunderstorm to the right. This has got major debris on the ground. This thing is doing, this thing is going to do big damage. Let's go down to that ditch, but still take, keep an eye on it. It's passing this debris on the ground. It's passing over 36 right now. Oh, dear God, we're in trouble. We're in trouble, folks. A car! Car just got hit! Car just got flipped over! Get down, guys. Everybody get down. You can see the funnel. It's gonna miss just to the north, guys. Passing just to the north of us. Get down, Tom. Get down. Don't look. Lay as flat as possible. Don't let any air get underneath you. Be careful, guys, because the inflow winds can get really strong, even close to Listen to the squealing. Can you hear the sound? Look at up there. Look at the cloud. Look. 
Look at it. Here it comes. Hang on, you guys. Hang on, you guys. Hang on, you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's past us, it's past us. We're fine. Okay. Get the debris. Get that. Can you get that? Are you getting that, Dave? It's sucking in another uh, another vortice. It's a multi-vortex right now. Yes, we're fine. Yes. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for 19 years watching this stuff. I, I, never, never been this close. Pretty impressive stuff. Storm chase. This edition of the Weekend Outlook is sponsored by the Weber Gas Barbecues. The legend lives on. Well, you don't have to fire up the barbecue this weekend. Mother Nature putting on the barbecue. It's going to be a hot one across the Plain States. And the heat that we've been seeing building across the southwestern states and the southern Plain States will gradually start to expand towards the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. I think you folks across New England states, though, might welcome this change because it's been rather cool as of late. But finally, back into the 70s by Saturday and Sunday, places like Poughkeepsie and Albany, on into Boston, and some warm 80s and 90s surging over towards the Ohio Valley. Valley and the really hot stuff from western Texas through the desert areas. Again, temperatures cracking the century mark. Kind of a busy weather pattern though this weekend as the jet stream skirting across the north, driving in one storm system after another. More scattered showers a possibility for the Ohio Valley for Saturday and the weather continues to be very unsettled too out towards the west. Stay tuned, we'll check out some busy radars coming up in just a moment. People on the west and east coast don't know anything about real barbecue. You have to come to Kansas City to get real barbecue. Good barbecue should be messy, yes. Even the names make you hungry for barbecue. I barbecue about two or three times a week. My barbecue is just as good or better than any restaurant in Kansas City because I make it. Good ribs. Good ribs. Can I get that to go, please? <laughs> When my allergies became a problem, bought a prescription was the answer. Instead, my allergist recommends Dymatac. Said an allergy study showed its antihistamine is even more effective than Seldane, a leading prescription. Ask your doctor. Doctors say Dymatac for good reason. For current allergy conditions in your area, call the Dymatac Allergy Hotline. Do you make promises in the spring? When everything is fresh and new. Promises to make things better? Wake up on Saturday morning feeling like you can do anything? Do earthworms make you happy? Do projects give you meaning? Do you like making promises? There's a place that will help you keep those promises. True value. Help is just around the corner. Our grandparents depended on this to assure a successful garden. Today, you can depend on this. Garden Weather on the Weather Channel, providing all the latest gardening information. Our planting calendar gives you timely planting forecasts with regional outlooks, frost and freeze advisories, and valuable tips on how to help your garden grow. Watch Garden Weather, sponsored by Preen. Discover the joys of weed-free gardening with Preen and Preen and Green from Greenview. This Weekend Outlook is sponsored by Black & Decker. It's how to get things done. Well, looking at Friday, boy, it's going to be hot through the uh, central part of the nation with 90s up to Omaha, Nebraska, to Memphis, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Raleigh, Durham, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Warming into the 80s, Mohawk and Hudson Valley, New York City, Philadelphia, and vicinity. Now, if anything, the weekend gets hotter, particularly over the central and southern part of the nation. 90s expand into South Dakota, up towards Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia by Sunday afternoon. Monday, those 90s retreat south somewhat. As for precipitation, best chance Friday, right along that warm front stretching through the mid-Atlantic with storms near Richmond, Cincinnati, Detroit, Chicago. Saturday looks thundery in uh, Lansing, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio, Buffalo. Nation's uh, mid-Atlantic region, wet on Sunday. And parts of the Northwest, showery too. Oh, well,
way from Terminal A to D in Frankfurt. You know not to plan a business meeting in Rome on August 15th. Everyone's on vacation. You know the fastest calculator in Osaka doesn't need batteries. And now you know the best way to fax virtually anywhere in the world from your business or home office. Only NCI One Fax assures you you'll never have to resend a fax or pay for incomplete transmissions. NCI World, for citizens of the world. Channel. No place on earth has better weather. It's now about 20 minutes after the top of the hour and time for your five-day business planner. Before we check out that long-range forecast, let's check out the long-term drought index. It's been exceptionally dry for the central and southern plain states and bone dry back on into the southwestern states. Many locales have hardly had any rainfall for the last several weeks, the past several months. But luckily, we have had some beneficial rains coming into California yesterday. In fact, some generous rains along coastal sections and likewise across the foothills. Like Blue Canyon, California, 2.71 inches of rain. Some significant rains to around Berkeley and Alameda, even around the Bay Area, just shy of an inch of rainfall yesterday. Well, there's much more rain where that came from. Actually, we had this big system plowing through the western states, pumping in some very moist air from off the Pacific, so that will help to generate more rain throughout the afternoon. From Seattle and Portland down towards the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys of California, you'll be seeing more rain and more rain too right around the wine country around the Napa Valley. We'll also see some heavier showers and storms too rolling in across the heartland. Already today, some of those thunderstorms have been approaching severe limits. We had reports of golf ball sized hailstones pounding Grand Island, Nebraska earlier this morning and some of the winds were being clocked at nearly 60 miles an hour. So some pretty ugly thunderstorms storms developing across the heartland. This large thunderstorm complex will continue to work its way off towards the east-southeast throughout the morning hours. Well, here's our forecast then for later on today. A low pressure area camped across the upper Midwest and a trailing front curling down towards the Ohio Valley. And that front will serve as the focal point for more showers and storms. We have the wind streaming up from the south, pumping in the warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico. And that warm, moist air will start to overrun this frontal boundary. And again, that will help to touch off those showers and storms. At the same time, another polar front starts to sag down from Canada. That, too, will cause increasing instability in the atmosphere. And here we go again, another round of rains coming in for the west. We have a whole parade of storm systems that have been lined up across the Pacific. Well, our next one, a fairly powerful one, continues to plow through the west. With that, we'll have some rain and some snow today. Snow showers, though, will stay fairly high. Snow levels for the Cascades up around four and 5,000 feet today, and snow levels way up there around 8,000 feet for the Sierra Nevada. But if you are planning on hiking or backpacking across the higher terrain, do be prepared for some very wintry conditions. Actually, some of the higher peaks across California California might be seeing as much as 6 to 12 inches worth of snowfall, especially the higher peaks around the central Sierra. You might be in for a heavy dumping of snow. But for today, rain will be a big problem, and with that added rain will come the added expense of maybe some localized flooding. We've already had some high rivers and streams across the Ohio Valley, and I'm sure this next round of rain will not help matters any. We're going to be seeing some very heavy amounts, maybe 2 or 3 inches for some locales. And also, we're going to be seeing some very warm temperatures, too, coming in across the country. So far, the hottest of readings remain across the southern Plain states and the southwest. But in time, we'll watch that warm air surging back towards the Ohio Valley and the northeast. As the trough of low pressure kicks on out, the jet stream lifts northward, and that means temperatures will have a chance to warm up quite a bit. Look at this by Sunday, 90s northward over towards the South Dakota border, 80s and 90s across the Ohio Valley, and widespread 70s across the northeast. From Poughkeepsie, Albany, Troy, New York, back over towards Boston and around Providence and Hartford. A nice warm spell for you folks. Finally, back to more seasonable readings, warming back into the 70s. 
Now, unfortunately, it will be a fairly stormy pattern though this weekend, primarily across the north. That is the main track of the jet stream at this time, and we're seeing some thunderstorms rumbling across the heartland for Friday. More thunderstorms start to erupt around the Ohio Valley and lower lakes for Saturday, and again, still staying rather unsettled for Sunday. Also, we have the moisture continuing to pour in across the Pacific Northwest, spawning more rains around Seattle and Portland, and eventually that energy and moisture spreads out across the Plain States by Monday afternoon. Stay tuned. We'll check out your own local weather coming up in just a moment. We'll also check out some radars. And again, this morning, we've had some severe weather across the heartland. We'll check out those radars coming up next. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. And good morning, everyone. This is Rick Griffin here, and I'm Cheryl Lemke. And you know it's going to be a busy day when already during the early morning hours, as it is right now, we have some very intense thunderstorms developing across the heartland. That's right. New severe thunderstorm watch covering parts of uh, Missouri and Nebraska and Iowa. Very strong cluster of storms moving through that region. Mm -hmm. First of all, we'd like to tell you that uh, this weather scope is sponsored. So let's go take a look at that before we get to the... Um, before we get to the satellite in motion. This weather scope and this morning's weather is sponsored by Gateway 2000. Personalized computers shipped factory direct. All right, straight to the satellite in motion. Let's see what's happening this morning. Cheryl mentioned the cluster of storms, very strong in Nebraska now, moving southeast. Of course, you can see the signature on the satellite in motion here. We'll get back to radar and Doppler radar, check on the uh, intense storms here in Nebraska very soon. Vigorous storm moving into the west, strong enough to bring record-setting rainfall to Sacramento yesterday over an inch when the normal rainfall for the entire month of May is less than a third of an inch. Usually that happens in the first week of the month. Very strong storm out here with wind, torrential rain, heavy high mountain snow in the forecast too. And in the mid-Atlantic, we've got some wet stuff to tell you about. While well, in the southern states, the weather is fairly tranquil in comparison, but there is a wind advisory for Texas today as those hot summer-like winds will be taking shape, temperatures uh, mid to upper 90s before the day is finished. Back to the northeast though, we've got some, uh, some fair cool weather, Boston to Portland, up to Caribou, but you head south, the clouds thicken, the rain shows up, we can see it uh, on the satellite picture, at least the enhanced cloud cover, most of that in West Virginia, Southern Virginia, North Central North Carolina. This is where some of the heavier rains have fallen overnight. Uh, and in fact, in West Virginia, some rather serious flooding has been reported. Fair skies, though, up towards Boston. And in Maine, it's very chilly. I'll show you how cold it is in just a bit. Here's the rain moving into New York City. We have some light uh, precipitation near Philadelphia. Atlantic City, heavier rains over the Chesapeake Bay and back across West Virginia. Still soggy this morning. Any additional rainfall in West Virginia could cause serious pro problems. Creeks and streams are high, ground saturated, and there is that potential for additional heavy rain as the day unfolds. Right now in Charleston, West Virginia, 62, rain in the vicinity. Other side of the mountains, 55 in D.C., 50 in New York City. Cooling to the 40s under clear skies in Boston. Uh, up to Caribou, Maine, it's 32. It's a bit frosty on this uh, Thursday morning in Aristotle County, Maine. Of course, not so in the south. Temperatures are mild, 71 in Nashville. Cooler in Atlanta, also in Jacksonville, 60 degrees, 70 in Tampa, 70s in Miami, the 70s all through Louisiana, Texas, and Oklahoma, 73 San Antonio now. Dallas is in the low 70s. High pressure dominates the south. And notice the isobars are a, a bit more packed together over Texas. That indicates that uh, the winds will be a bit stronger, and there is, as a matter of fact, a wind advisory in effect for Texas. It's sort of going to be like a blast furnace across the Lone Star State today. As with the wind, temperatures again will climb to 95 to 100 degrees over much of the western half of the state. Meanwhile, a little farther north, a warm front stretches through the nation's midsection from Nebraska to Illinois, Missouri, and Iowa, right along that warm front. Now near the front, New severe thunderstorm watch has been issued. It includes Omaha. It includes uh, the St. Joseph, Missouri area, as well as the southwest corner of Iowa. Here's what's going on. The colorized satellite shows an MCS, a mesoscale convective system, covering much of the eastern half of Nebraska. At least the high, cold cloud tops do. The actual thunderstorms cover a much smaller area in the southeast part of the state. Now these storms will be moving off to the east. Another cluster of storms beginning to develop uh, near Scottsbluff. 
uh, in western Nebraska, and isolated thunderstorms here in northeast Iowa and north central Illinois. Back to radar, these are the storms, the heavier storms in southeast Nebraska, right along Interstate 80, moving east. Doppler radar shows what appears to be a bow echo shape, and when you see this, you can usually be assured that there are strong winds in association with the storm. And in fact, just in the last hour, Grand Islands reported a wind gust to 80 miles an hour along with golf ball sized hail. This particular uh, storm is moving into Saline County and a couple other counties right here in Nebraska, just west of Lincoln, and uh, you can be assured that there will be some severe weather activity with the storm as it heads east. And if it holds together, uh, you folks in Lincoln and possibly the county south of Omaha could be affected by the storm. Very strong cluster of storms, east central Iowa, Stevenson County in north central Illinois is now under a severe thunderstorm warning. County west of Chicago. In Chicago now 53 winds off the water, 56 in Minneapolis, 73 in Kansas City. Uh, checking on temperatures in the west, they range from cool in Cutbank to warm in Salt Lake, and it is wet in California as a vigorous mid-spring storm heads in off the Pacific with heavy rains and some heavy high mountain snow. Where is the rain going to be going as it heads out of California? Well, let's find out now with a good morning forecast and Cheryl. But first of all, let's check out some of the record warmth that we had across the Plain States, like Lubbock, Midland, Texas. Boy, we were in the Century Club yesterday as temperatures cracked 100 degrees. We also had some very warm temperatures, though, too, for Garden City, Grand Junction, Colorado, even Denver in the upper 80s. That is quite unusual for this time of the year. Out to the west, though, we've had all the soaking rains that Rick was just mentioning. Blue Canyon, one of the hardest hit locales, receiving just shy of three inches worth of rain. Well, we've had a very soggy weather pattern across California, and the rains will just continue for today, so no let up in sight. One system after another swinging in from off the Pacific, and that will help to generate more rain showers. But also, there's some very cold air aloft in association with this next low pressure area. So chilly, in fact, that we'll see some snow. Snow levels are still staying relatively high, though, across the western states mainly teetering between four and 5,000 feet for the Cascades, but up to about 8,000 feet for the snow levels across California. But needless to say, if you are going to be traveling across the higher terrain, you will be encountering wintry conditions. Across the Midwest, though, it feels like anything but winter. We're talking about a big heat wave going on. Normal highs for Kansas City and St. Louis should be in the mid-70s. Today, though, kind of a jump start in the summer season, with highs pushing very close to 90 around Missouri and Kansas for later this afternoon. In the northeast, some changeable weather. Yesterday we had some sunshine blanketing the region. Today they'll increase in clouds and those clouds will be yielding some rain. Kind of a taste of things to come already as there's been some scattered rains from Pittsburgh through Philly, Washington DC. The rain will continue to ride northward across the Hudson Valley and across southern New England throughout the course of the afternoon. Temperatures though still staying on the cool side with the 50s and the 60s and that's because of the cloud cover spreading its way across the region. But things will be warming up nicely as we approach the weekend. In fact, by Sunday and Monday, we're talking about 70s and 80s turning back to the northeast. So hang in there. Things will be warming up. A pretty nice day for some outdoor plans across the south. But thunderstorms will be rumbling today from the Tennessee Valley over towards the Carolinas. Stay tuned. We'll check out your weekend coming up shortly. They say Gateway 2000 changed how the world buys computers. Factory Direct over the phone. Now we bring you Destination. It's a big screen PC. This is cool. It is TV access. Huge. Oh my gosh. You're going to want one of these, you know. Where, where does it come from? South Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. To find out more about Destination or our other PCs, call 1 800 Gateway. You've got a friend in the business. This is your local forecast, information you can plan on, because now we show it on the 8s of every hour. Local on the 8s on the Weather Channel. Doppler. Oh, it looks like some of that rain's going to hit right about the time of the morning rush. Colin, do um, you think we might lower the temperatures? Well, those kids are going to have to really bundle up. Looks like there's a very large high pressure system coming down from the northeast. It's going to be some big changes. 
It's time now for the Florida forecast. Our latest satellite picture shows bright white clouds developing here over the panhandle. Rightfully so. We've had some thunderstorms moving off the coast here. Very dangerous. Well, actually moving onshore. Very dangerous scenario around Tallahassee and Pensacola. And we've had reports of lightning with these now. Please be careful. It is a rough day at the beach, that's for sure. So not much in the way of uh, ex uh, intense heat or an intense sunshine, but from Lake Okeechobee points south, you'll have to wear your sunscreen. We've had this frontal boundary to the north and a broad tropical air mass south of it, so Florida, you are in the tropical air mass. With uh, afternoon highs today like this, Orlando about 94, 92 at Clearwater, 92 at Palm Beach, and Miami uh, today forecasting a high of 91. Water temperature of 86 at Miami, Daytona Beach 81 and 84 at Panama City. Stay with us. Current weather from coast to coast. All details coming up next with Weatherscope. <laughs> Antibiotic Plus Moisturizers, the number one brand in hospitals, is coming home. It's looking like another typical summer day as temperatures continue to climb over different parts of the country. Good morning. I'm Vivian Brown. And I'm Marshall Cease. We'll check out your forecast in a minute, but we'll begin by looking at some tornadic activity in Colorado. Storm chasers Martin Licious and Curtin Uglin caught this tornado on camera Tuesday afternoon in Lyman, Colorado, in the eastern part of the state. This was one of two twisters that were reported in the area. Officials say a barn was destroyed, but no other property damage or injuries resulted from the coverage this morning. We have an area of expanding coverage in Florida with some showers and thunderstorms. That's moving right across Interstate 10 and some heat today. Right, Viv? Oh, yeah, it's going to be hot again today for the western half of the country. Residents in the state of Washington, well, I'm sure they're wishing for some cooling showers as the northwest continues to heat up. What a difference a week has made in Seattle. Temperatures Tuesday reached the mid-80s, quite a contrast from last week when the mercury ranged only in the 60s. Many were out yesterday taking advantage of the warm-up, mainly sunbathers. Well, the high of 97 degrees yesterday in Houston, that coupled with a high humidity made conditions very uncomfortable for joggers and others who were outdoors, but some people managed to find a cool spot. If you have to be outside on days like this, we urge you to drink plenty of liquids and dress on the cool side and try to find a spray uh, or um, a um, area of cool water, faucet, cool water, uh, splashing because it is hot and it's going to be hot again today. Notice all of the 90s we had yesterday for highs across the southeast, much of the west. Vegas, 112 degrees yesterday, got up to 109 in Phoenix, 86 in Seattle, and look at Portland yesterday, a high of 98. We'll be approaching 100 degrees today in Portland, and believe it or not, it's going to be even hotter today in Seattle than what we saw yesterday, and yesterday temperatures were running about 10 to 15 degrees above the norm, so that's just how hot it is. So, of course, this will be the hottest time of the year, and with more heat, we can certainly anticipate uh, quite a bit of sunshine and just uncomfortable conditions. So whatever you did yesterday to beat the heat, you might want to do the same again today. Sunny in Seattle, a high of 90 degrees, but again, the a century mark in Portland with partly cloudy conditions. Current temperatures out west like this. Portland, you're checking in with 68 this hour, 66 in Medford, 81 in Vegas, 86 in Phoenix, Salt Lake City, you're checking in with 67 and 56 in Denver. There was a threat of storms today, Denver, as the tail end of this front kind of drapes back across the front range of Colorado. This is a front that's separating much cooler air, a new continental polar air mass building over the northern plains. This is modified polar air, so it's a little warmer ahead of the front with temperatures in the 60s. But notice this front, it's separating the tropical air to the south of it large area of 70s and by the afternoon we talk about 90s and that combined with humidity will make for very dangerous conditions today so we urge you to take frequent breaks if you have to be outdoors and drink plenty of fluids even across the southwest now southern california arizona you're in the danger zone so get you a lot of water 
certainly will come in handy. You don't, don't want to dehydrate. Here's a look at the midday hour now. There's your front, still stalled here across the southeast. And with the heat and humidity, we'll find some uh, instability storms. will be popping up right along the immediate Gulf Coast. And you can see now the front draped back over the panhandle. Well, it's just say the Red River Valley here of Texas and Oklahoma. And this surface front sliding over the Great Lakes and eventually moving into the northeast. So then the forecast today for precipitation could be locally heavy here, Texas and Oklahoma, with high... No. Okay, checking on the northeastern forecast now. I'll tell you what, many of the metropolitan areas in the northeast will enjoy nice conditions today. We have a trough of low pressure that's moving through the central Great Lakes. This system perhaps will enhance the chance of showers tomorrow, but today should be pretty nice. We've had some low clouds and still reports of some fog in some areas, but uh, for the most part, we think that the clouds will begin to scour out by the afternoon and will be replaced with sunshine. So PM sun, Boston, a high of 79 p.m. sun in New York, a high of 80 and partly cloudy in Philly. Your local forecast coming up. 35 years ago, I had a vision. The weather show. No place on earth has better weather. Forecasts from the Weather Channel are also available from the following. It's time now to look at the tropics 10 minutes before the hour. The month of July, these areas we focus our attention. Better chance for tropical development over the last 100 years. Most of our storms have developed in these regions throughout the uh, month of July, the latter part anyway, as we've had some 36 storms that have developed in these general areas. The uh, Gulf of Mexico, just north of the Caribbean, and also as uh, waves come across the uh, central Atlantic here and get closer to the the Lesser Antilles, the Leeward and the Windward Islands, there is a chance that storms could develop. Now, we've had a couple of storms already, Arthur and Bertha, of course Bertha became a hurricane. Cesar will be our next tropical storm the Atlantic Basin. Is there a Cesar on the horizon now? Well, as we look across the broad waters of the Atlantic, we have our satellite picture, which clearly identifies this area right here. It's a fairly impressive tropical wave. It has quite a bit of convection associated with it. We've had reports of very gusty winds around uh, St. Lucia. We've had reports of sustained winds at some 22 miles an hour, and wind gusts have been reported near Barbados up to 40 miles an hour. Hour. So a lot of squally weather. We've had some localized heavy rains too over some of the islands. A little bit farther to the west, we have seen a weaker wave, but uh, most of the convection with this is dying down. The Gulf of Mexico is quiet, and we're also watching another wave to the east of this one, but it seems as though the convection with this one has started to decrease over the last uh, several hours. So let's zoom in on this wave. Again, this is Puerto Rico, and then we head southward, the Lesser Antilles here. This is Grenada, and you talk about Barbados here. We've had some very heavy rains and again very gusty winds and the system is approaching the eastern Caribbean. Now if you re remember the climatology uh, denotes that this area is not necessarily favorable for development throughout the month of July but this wave is quite impressive and as it moves into the eastern Caribbean of course it becomes of more concern because it gets closer and closer to the islands here and of course the lower 48 so definitely an area you will have to watch for you. Uh, we've been watching high pressure aloft, and that is uh, conducive, if you will, for tropical development. So that's one thing that um, is perhaps helping the system increase and maintain its status and perhaps even become uh, more organized over the next 12 to 24 hours. But again, quite a bit of convection associated with it, and that's one of the first signs that we look for in terms of tropical system, and that is the uh, thunderstorm activity and the convection being persistent in one general area and that's pretty much what we've had now overnight it seems as though the convection with the system just seems to uh, increase even more so again here's that next wave and you don't see as much convection with this one as we have with this one and this one now uh, perhaps could develop into something quite uh, even more interesting so we'll keep you posted on this very impressive tropical wave that is getting ready to push into the eastern Caribbean here is that tropical wave on a broad 
broader satellite picture and the other about 200 miles to the east of it. Uh, you can see though that the convection with this one is really dying down. However, this one seems to be increasing. Uh, across the uh, East Pacific, we've had some thunderstorm activity along the intertropical convergence zone. No low level circulation has been denoted though with these uh, uh, thunderstorms that have developed here. So this is uh, not necessarily uh, tropical in terms of uh, increasing into a tropical storm or anything. Now we have been watching tropical storm Herb here and also so Typhoon Gloria, as it continues to move to the west, northwest, expected to uh, become a typhoon with winds up to 110 miles an hour as it moves across Taiwan and then eventually into mainland China. You know, we'll keep you posted on Gloria and Herb as we go through the next 24 hours. Okay, that's a look at the tropics. Let's check on your weekend. This weekend outlook is sponsored by Hagen Das. It's just perfect. Here's the midday hour. And we have our front as it drapes across the southeast. Thunderstorms developing over the immediate Gulf Coast here and along the tail end of the front around Texas and Oklahoma, the Red River Valley here. Dallas, perhaps more storms expected for you throughout the afternoon. And then we'll have this front as it pushes through the central Great Lakes area later today and then tomorrow getting closer and closer to New York State and Pennsylvania. But notice behind it we have a much cooler and drier air mass that will build over Minnesota, Illinois, and Wisconsin, so the Midwest should enjoy drier and cooler conditions. The local conditions coming up.